Petra Kucha 251, Batman White Knight, Ultimate Spider-Man and Gundam, where I complain about comic books I actually quite like and talk a little bit about some art I did. So I don't know where you are, but there was a heat wave where I was, and boy did that affect my um, intention to do anything, <laughs> period. Um, but I just I wanted to spend a bit more time uh, messing around with the Gundam art I did last week, which was, you know, just about trying to spend a specific amount of time doing something with the intention of doing it and building up this idea of discipline. And so what I was trying to do here was take what was fundamentally a very basic black mark uh, sketch and like flesh out uh, the image with um, kind of strong construction lines with this idea. Make it cool. It doesn't have to be accurate, but it has to look cool. Um, and just like that Starscream picture I did, the, I'm, I'm trying to eyeball it. I'm trying to sort out the perspective so that, you know, everything is going in the same direction and I'm not creating an image that you know on a subconscious level something is wrong. Your brain just tells you something's wrong. And I did a lot of ironing out of, of the details and I got it as close to credible as I could. I can s still see that there are certain elements of it that don't all align in the same direction at the same angle so the perspective is off but it's like I was like I just want to add grayscale to this and I just want to mess around with lighting so I added uh, you know grayscale that is supposed to kind of match the color variants of the Gundam you know the reds and the yellows and the blues and the whites that make it up <clears throat> with the intention of, well, now we've got a base, now we apply shadow to this and we can see if we end up with something tighter than last time. So I added um, cast and form shadows, which are, you know, the idea that the light is hitting where it hits. And then there are things in front of some of the forms where there's a shadow underneath those. You know, if you approach it metaf methodically, you, you can make sure that you're thinking about it the right way. And then I was like, right, let's apply global lighting. Uh, and just like the previous image, the idea is that the light's coming from behind on the right. So the left is kind of in quite a lot of shadow. And I think one of the greatest tricks I've learned in the last two years is like, you know, shadow the head so that there's a shadow of the head on the body. It does wonders to make things look like they're popping. And then I was like, you know what? Let's <laughs> let's, let's just grab a stupid JPEG uh, of for like brushed steel off the internet and then let's color this in and see if we can get somewhere where I can use digital art to hide the fact that the foundation of this image isn't quite sound. Uh, so, you know, on the left, here's my little 45 second sketch and on, on, on the right, so here's where I was at the end of the week um, using every cheeky trick like glowing eyes, which is just like, it's just a layer filter thing. Um, I'm happy with where I've got, it's not perfect, but it's it, it's it was an enjoyable experience. I might do a bit more next week. So Ultimate Spider-Man in the vein of Ultimate X-Men is a reboot from the 2000s uh, of Spider-Man. And where Ultimate X-Men was kind of... It was an update and it was also very edgy. Ultimate Spider-Man is... It does almost nothing to push things in any direction, which is good and bad. Uh, the only major thing, which may not even be new, is the idea that Norman Osborn is directly responsible for the radioactive spider that isn't radioactive but it you know it's it's a scientifically altered spider that bites peter parker and gives him his powers uh this book does a fantastic job of making peter parker come out as um a likable young man at school surrounded by assholes because brian michael bendis the writer is so good at writing people as assholes. It's surprising that Peter Parker doesn't come off as 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 a dick. Um, but but the thing is, um, he's attacked on all sides by everything, and um, the 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 pressure he's under. It's I'm surprised he doesn't turn into the Punisher instead of the Spider Man. To be honest, um, but it's 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 a it's a it's an excellent character piece for why you should root for Peter Parker. Uh, and then Green Goblin shows up, uh, Norman Osborn turns into the Green Goblin, who doesn't talk, is bare-chested, he's hench, he's mistaken for the Hulk because he's so big and boring, uh, and then Peter Parker wins and that's the end of the book. You know, no harm, no foul. Uh, Mark Bagley's art is fantastic. 
Uh, so, Batman White Knight. Um, it's a modern book published in 2017. Um, if this is a modern classic, Batman's in trouble. Um, I really like it and I really hate it. Um, it basically... Sean Murphy writes and illustrates it. I love his character design. I love his art. I love the world he creates. Uh, he owns this shit. He really does. I mean, DC owns it, but you know. he He's excellent. My major gripe is with the fact that the storytelling is maybe the greatest example of hot shotting I've ever seen in my fucking life. And that probably includes the Attitude Era. Um, it's basically about the Joker going sane. Um, but, you know, the Joker isn't really the Joker. Batman's not really the Batman. They're d his own versions of these characters in their own fake history. Um, and the book kind of begins with the Joker explaining to Batman how important he is to their their mythos. And then effectively, you know, the Joker's like the biggest villain in Gotham is you, Batman. And I'm like, this whole thing reads a lot like a fan fiction if I was to write this. It's so contrived. It's interesting. And it, it has a lot of socio-political stuff going on in the back. Um, and then I realized that from what I've read on the back that DC paid Sean Murphy um, to create his own version of the Batman universe. It's not canon, like pretty much every good Batman book I've read recently. Um, he is an independent creator. He doesn't need their money. He's just going to build a name for himself and fuck off. And the consequences of that are, because the book kind of breaks kayfabe when it comes to the Joker, who, who does so many things to make Batman look stupid over the course of a long book, but Batman comes along and wins in the end, it just makes the entire thing seem stupid. And if you, if you can't suspend your disbelief, why are you going to go buy more Batman books? But again, it's really good. So DC might feel encouraged to make more people do this. Sean Murphy is an excellent... He's a fan of Batman. It's evident on every page. If someone comes along and does what he did and isn't a fan... You know, Batman will always be a successful franchise, but comic book sales will fall off a cliff. And Batman's probably the most successful comic book selling, selling book there is that isn't manga. Because... There's no point in comparing manga to, to American comic books. Manga's actually popular. But yeah, I I could do a video essay on Batman White Knight and the dangers contained therein. But I won't, because it doesn't really matter. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I bought a physical copy of it, unlike Three Jokers. I should have bought a physical copy of that as well, but that cost like two or three times as much. That's probably telling in its own right. Um, I will stop talking now. Uh, if you can get White Knight or Ultimate Spider-Man for free on the internet, which you probably can, I recommend reading them if you've got nothing better to do. If you have access to your local library, COVID notwithstanding, maybe see if they've got them. Check them out. And that's the end of Petrocution 251. I'll see you next time.